guys, welcome back. I'm Gret Slater, and I'm here to talk about art and random stuff. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Today I'm going to be talking about my one brush challenge and walkthrough of what I did. So on Procreate, I chose the flat brush, and I wanted to do a landscape because I tend to do mostly portraits and I wanted to expand my horizons. So I start out blocking out the colors and the shapes that I want. Again, I start out super, super loose because again, it's something in nature. There's not man-made products. So if it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like, it's okay because it's nature. And the scene I'm doing is a bunch of rocks with a couple trees and a waterfall. And I did this challenge because I really wanted to not rely on certain brushes to make my pieces and really work on color theory. And a part of this is, is I didn't use the blending tool. I just used the brush and the pressure curve, which was a challenge, but I honestly really enjoyed the style that it came out of this piece. And this first part I'm doing all in one layer, which is really weird because I tend to use 8 million different layers, and I think I used maybe 12 in the end of this, but that was after I started the block coloring. So pretty much all this part I did with block coloring, and it was really nice. I did one other piece where I did it this way, um, my like woodsy kind of piece and I really liked that performance because that was more of a landscape than a portrait but all of this is all in one layer until I start doing these trees in more detail so I think around here is when I made a new layer and yeah I really really enjoyed the red trees and how I made it it actually reminds me a lot of one of my friend's pieces that they did for their AP portfolio, and maybe I was a little inspired by that piece. Who knows? But I kept going in and using the selector tool because I wouldn't use the full pressure when I used the flat brush, which helped me get different shades. And I'd select, and that's how I got a lot of stuff for my colors, and I made sure it was super, super vibrant in my piece, that the colors that I use, so there's a lot of purples, and a lot of like cyan and stuff, which I think really help out in the end. And when I went back for shading, I made sure to use a more saturated dark color, rather than just a black. And I think that definitely helps with the color pop. Especially you can see in the trees I'm shading with purple rather than black. And that's like a little dark maybe blue that I'm using right now. Oh my god, the grass part right here was so much fun to do. Um it was a little daunting at first because you had to like do every single one as a stroke, but finding those greens and Especially in this piece with all the different greens, it's pretty cool how many different like blue greens there are and kind of all the differences you can make to give different textures. That is something else I learned by using one brush is how to get the different textures by changing the opaque and see and like the width of it. Like I made it very small for the grass versus the trees. I made it much, much larger. I mean, not much larger. A bigger brush.
rocks and I'm about to start are really, really fun. I had a lot of fun playing with lighting and the opacity and like just the rougher shapes with the rocks. I also really like the browns that I used in here. Um, I had a bad experience with the past painting with painting rocks, so I was glad that I was able to redo them in this piece and then come out the way I wanted to. 